Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to see a little bit of information about Apache Spark. So, what is Apache Spark? What does it do? So, how does it differ from Apache Hadoop? And uh, how, internally, how does Apache Spark works? And what is the life cycle of an Apache Spark? And what are the different terms involved in uh, manipulating the data using Apache Spark? And also, finally, we are going to see some uh, live examples uh, using Apache Spark. So, I have downloaded Apache Spark. Uh, we can uh, do something about that. So there are some documentations in Apache Spark website. So we are going to use that documentation to uh, literally bring up a um, Apache Spark server and we are going to try that uh, Apache Spark uh, computing engine. So let's do that. So before going into what is Apache Spark. So if you are familiar with Apache Hadoop, uh, these are different um, uh, tools for uh, querying big data. So basically these are different tools for uh, processing and uh, transforming big data and mining them and um, uh, getting meaningful information out of the uh, huge amount of data which you have. So previously if you see uh, Hadoop was the big um, thing but uh, Hadoop also has performance issues uh, that is what uh, uh, Spark is overcoming with. So let's see what is Apache Spark right. So basically what is Spark. So Spark is an open source cluster computing framework which was created by a group of people okay uh, to overcome what was uh, a problem in Hadoop okay so what internally spark does is it does real-time data processing with huge amount of data which basically Hadoop is lagging with so if you know about Hadoop Hadoop can do batch processing only however Apache Spark can do real-time data processing as well as batch processing at the same time so it can be used for real-time data processing as well and it can be used for batch processing as well. So initially Spark was de developed by um, uh, people from the University of California uh, in the uh, which is in Berkeley. Uh, so uh, that's called AMP lab. So I, I don't know the full form. I think it's somewhere something like algo machine or machine people or something like that. So, um, so they created uh, the Spark framework there and later on they moved that to Apache Foundation. So that is why it is now called Apache Spark. So initially it was just called Spark. Okay. So now there are lots of active community. Uh, there are lots of people uh, who are uh, contributing to the Spark community, and it is growing day by day. And it is one of the um, highly valued frameworks uh, in the big data world now, currently. Okay. So why use Spark? Why not Hadoop? So as we just uh, discussed, right? So the MapReduce solves only batch processing problem. However, Spark does real time data problems as well and also the other thing to mention is spark is uh, almost 10 times faster than Hadoop. that's what they claim so and that is how the stats uh, reveal uh, same way as i mentioned uh, spark solves the general purpose computing system which is real-time data and batch processing both but uh, Hadoop does only batch processing so that is a major advantage of spark and also the number of lines of uh, code which you write in spark is less compared to what we wrote in Hadoop. So Hadoop, if you know, it was written in Java, but Spark is written in Scala. So Scala is another uh, language which is written over the JVM um, with the functional uh, programming in idea, right? Um, so if you see um, the uh, Scala code, it is all functional. So Java, with Java, Java is now moving to functional style. However, Spark did that earlier. So so uh, so Apache Spark is like sorry, Scala did that earlier. So Apache Spark is written on Scala. Okay. So what does uh, Apache Spark um, is composed of, right? So initially they have a Spark core library. So that is what is going to control everything. So it is like the heart of uh, Spark. So over that we have uh, Spark SQL. So that is like a SQL interface kind of thing using which you can query Spark core or you can even uh, you can query everything. So you can use uh, SQL like syntaxes to query Spark. So that is the Spark SQL. That is one part of it. Same way the next one is Spark uh, streaming. So you can query streaming uh, data from Spark using this. You can query and put both. Basically you just put the data and then get it back. So the next one is machine library, machine learning library. So uh, MLIP. So that is one part of uh, Spark as well. So there are machine learning libraries inbuilt in Spark so that you can use them to do some machine learning related operations. Finally, graphics. So if you want to do graphic related 
uh, storage and you want to retrieve uh, store data in the form of graphical representation then you can use that as well so these are different core uh, components inside spark and finally how do we get the data so we get the data using data frames so uh, so the data frames abstracts all these out so using the data frames we have to get the data from spark so this is generally the high level of how spark is built so this is how spark's internal looks like okay so what are the different components inside a spark now that we saw what is what is there in spark what are the different components inside a spark architecture so how does uh, spark maintain these uh, resiliencies and failures and stuff like that right so so spark has something called a driver okay so the driver is like a master so that is the one which is going to command everyone saying okay do this and do that something like that so inside the driver we have something called spark context so this is similar to the apl application context if you had used a spring so this is going to have all the data which we um, store or something like that okay so then these spark contexts are going to control the worker threads or the worker nodes basically so inside the worker nodes we have executors and these executors basically execute some tasks so uh, there is a driver which acts like a master and the driver instructs the workers to execute some tasks so that is all done by the spark context so spark context instructs the workers to execute some tasks on each node okay so if a particular task fails that gets rebuilt and spark context rebuilds that and sends it to the worker again okay so that is how uh, fault tolerant is handled so how fault tolerant is handled we are going to see that what technology they use and what concepts they use so that's it about the components so there are different abstractions which are done in spark so that you don't know what's happening internally so you don't have to know what a component does what uh, how it is done and stuff like that so we are going to see what are the different abstractions so the first one is the resilient data dis data distributed data sets basically these are called rdd so this is the core uh, component of spark so whenever you are operating on any data you will use an rdd okay so that is called a resilient distributed data sets so these are nothing but uh, uh, data sets which are reconstructed on the nodes so these are uh, basically um, data which gets generated whenever you want to do something on that on a uh, on a data okay and and then if there is a failure these data gets reconstructed every time okay so this rdd gets reconstructed every time these are basically immutable data and then you can do some transformation let's uh, cover that in depth in the uh, coming slides uh, let's move to the next abstraction so the next abstraction is the data frames or the data sets so this uh, we would have heard right from the previous uh, slides so data frames are nothing but an abstraction which is going to cover up all the spring core uh, sql streaming and uh, machine learning library which uh, spark has so data frames is another level of abstraction which is provided by spark uh, there is something called d streams as well d streams are for spark uh, spark related streaming api so that is nothing but an api so d streams is another api uh, which we use for stream processing okay so now let's see what is rdd right so we uh, as i said rdd is uh, resilient distributed data sets but what are these used for so these are used for transforming data okay so these are used uh, to generate data sets on which you can transform data so if you see uh, the definition right the transformations are generated as acyclic directed acyclic graph basically rdd uses the concept of dag so it uses uh, dag to uh, transform objects or transform data sets okay so the DAG can be recomputed during failure so whenever there is a failure in the node whenever there is a failure in the worker or the executor thread or the node these DAGs are recomputed basically they are recreated okay and finally there are transformations happening on this particular RDD so what are the different types of transformation there are there is something called map there is something called filter there is flat map there are text files etc so you would have heard all these in java streams so these are just uh, transformation techniques to transform data from one type to another so these are just general concepts of uh, transformation so that is why you see the same names map filter flat map and text file okay so that is rdd so rdd is going to be the key for us to transform data using apache spark and internally it can use map filter flat map and stuff like that okay 
and as I said earlier, these are immutable. So once you create an RDD, you cannot change it. So let's say when you are querying a data in the cluster, uh, so whenever you do a RDD creation, it gets created and it is immutable. So when the data gets updated on the cluster, the this RDD has to be reconstructed, okay, or recomputed basically, okay. So that is why it is uh, immutable. So RDD is immutable. So you just it just creates a snapshot of the data at that instance. So it creates a data set from that instance at that particular point of time. Okay, now let's move to the life cycle in Spark. So how does a typical life cycle in Spark look like? So how do, how do I put the data? How do I get the data? So how, how do I need to do that, right? So the initial part is loading the data. So that is when different data sources come into picture. So you can load stream streaming data. You can load the data uh, data from the database any any database like Cassandra or relational database or even the HSQL uh, sorry the uh, HDFS file system. So you can all or even the S3 Amazon S3 system. So all these are loaded as data sources into Spark. So it can accept any type of data source. So whether you have file system or the uh, relational database or the key value store or anything else so if you have the data stored somewhere it can be loaded as a data store using the data sources okay the next one would be the transformation so once the data is loaded we need to transform the data so transformation is what is going to play a key role in transforming these data data so using the transformation we use the map uh, for the transformation we use the map filter map we would have seen that right so once the transformation is complete we have to perform an action on the transformed data. So that is what action means. So once you, let's say you are going to filter out some data. So you have a collection of, uh, let's say, vowels collection. You have, um, you want to filter out only um, A or E. So then you do some operation that is transformation. And then finally you end it saying, okay, I, I'm done. Just collect this or uh, group by or do something with that, reduce it or uh, just compress it. So that is an action. And finally, whatever data we have got, it should be pushed to the UI dashboard for real time uh, analysis or it can be persisted for future usage in the form of processed data because these are processed, right? These are processed at that particular instance. So this is how a typical life cycle of Spark look like. So looks like. So if I convert this into points, so load the data into the cluster. You need to create RDD. So once you have created the RDD, you have to do transformation. Once you have done the transformation, you have to perform an action. Once the action is done, you have to create data frames out of it. Using the data frames, you can query the data, query the data. Okay. Or you can even run SQLs on the data frames. Okay. So that's it about Spark. So let's try what a Spark is, right? So let's uh, go ahead and try Spark. So I have installed uh, Spark already. If you, uh, it's not an installation as such. It's just a, a binary download. So I downloaded Spark already, and I have just unzipped it in my uh, downloads folder. So this is the current version of Spark, which is out there. It has Spark 2.1, and then it said it had Hadoop 2.7 inbuilt. So I'm not having any cluster, nothing. It's just plain laptop. I just have a MacBook Pro. So let's try what it does, right? So I'm in the bin folder. If you see, uh, let's go to the structure of uh, the Hadoop package. So you have jars, you have notice, you have yarn, you have sbin, you have you Python licenses examples. These are different um, folders where um, these are prepackaged and given for us. So there are some examples as well. So we are going to see those examples from the documentation which uh, Apache has provided. So for now, we are going to first go ahead and start Apache. Spark okay, so in order to do that, we need to run a command called Spark shell. Okay, so where am I? I'm in the bin folder. Yeah, so I need to run a command called Spark shell. Okay, now I need to provide what is it? It's a master, and I need to give the host where it needs to run so it's the local host and uh, i'm going to say that i need only one thread right okay I, I i don't want to kill my machine okay it's a very old machine but yeah so i'm just saying local one so let this start up meanwhile let's go to the documentation and then see 
okay so if you see here this is the spark web, uh, website so spark.apache.org and i'm just in the latest uh, documentation doc slash latest so if you see here whatever command i ran it is present here so you can also run spark uh, interactively to modify the version of scala this is a great way to learn the framework so this is how you run so master option specifies the master url for a distributed cache so this is nothing but the url for the cache so or even local to run the locally with one thread so yeah so this is how you run one thread so i'm just saying that uh, my local is the master for the distributed cluster and uh, i have only one thread that is what i have done here so and this instance is going to be run as a scala shell so if you see uh, i have started this as a scala shell if you are uh, expert in python you can use python shell as well so okay so if you see here the process has come up uh, if you see here this is the log of uh, spark so it is just uh, throwing some info logs fail to create a global database returning no such object exception okay uh, spark contacts web ui available at something so it is saying that okay there is a web ui available for spark at this particular url i don't know i have never tried it uh, and same way there is something called spark context available as sc so this is what we saw in the diagram right if you um, uh, recollect the diagram we said there will be a spark context which is under a driver and that will be managing different executors okay so that is nothing but this spark context so and you can access that using sc so if you see here this is a scala interactive uh, shell so this particular uh, command like uh, the spark shell has internally got the scala uh, command line interface so this is basically coming from scala so since spark is written on scala so they have integrated this uh, shell into Scala into Spark itself so that we can do some operations uh, in the Spark directly here without even having to write a new program as such. Uh, so then next there is something called uh, Spark session available as Spark so you can use Spark to access some Spark sessions. So meanwhile let's go to the URL. I don't know. I haven't checked what this URL shows. Okay, so this is just showing what are the different. It's showing some event line. So it okay. It's just like showing we oh okay this look at this this is the executor uh, thread which we saw right there is a, it's saying that executor driver added i'm not sure what does it mean maybe we can try running some example programs and i think uh, these jobs should be showing some event uh, event timing data okay so what i have done is i have gone through this documentation and i'm just going to the quick start guide which has uh, given me some examples of what i can do so for example uh, we have this spark context which is the sc so using spark how can we do some operations on a file right so first uh, as you know what we have to do is we have to do the rdd so basically you have to load the data and then create an rdd okay that is what we are going to do here so what i am going to do is there is a file called readme.md uh, i have opened one more tab here okay and this is the same folder and i have already created a file called readme.md and it has uh, the content of hello youtube okay so let's go to this so what we are going to do here is we are going to read that readme.md file also there is a readme.md in the previous folder uh, we can uh, actually we can go and read that file as well because that has more content so let's see if it works so what i have done is i have just executed the command val text file equal to sc dot text file of whatever so this is a scala uh, syntax uh, if you are not aware about scala it's okay even i don't know scala uh, it's just uh, similar to java but it is slightly different than java but uh, let's for our case we are going to understand spark so in order to understand spark you need to understand scala as well so i would suggest you go ahead and learn Sp uh, scala as well so i am also going to do that um, but before that uh, to understand what is spark and how we can do things in spark uh, we can just do some basic uh, Scala coding that should be okay. So uh, as you can see this is readable right. So we are using the spark context using a text file. We are just reading a readme.md and storing it something called text file. So and if you notice here the log which uh, Scala has sent us or the spark has sent us is it has created a RDD okay with readme.md and it has created a map partition rdd1 at text file so basically this text file is the object is created now and we can use that text file okay so what i'm going to do now next is 
you can uh, if you see that life cycle what we did what, what we said so first we have to create a rdd then you have to transform the data then you have to do some action on the data so i'm not going to do any transformation on the data i'm just going to say what is the count of the text file so basically this is going to return the size of the text file so if you see here it says long 104 so this text file is nothing but the file which is there in the previous directory why space is like creating issues okay if you see here this is going to return the uh, size of the file which is there in this particular directory so this particular file if you notice it is huge so this is nothing but the readme file given by spark itself so that is what uh, our transformation or the action has resulted in okay so what we did is we just did an action and then this is now returned a, a result for it so this text file is now still there so this is nothing but a rtd and it is immutable it is not going to change even if you change the content of the data this is not going to change until you re um, recreate the rtd okay now let's do some transformation on this right so let's do some uh, transformation on this data so there are some samples which uh, uh, they have given already if you see here in the this is the documentation from the uh, um, apache spark website so what they are saying is do a text file dot count this is going to return the number of items in the rtd maybe different for your readme will change over time similar to the other outputs okay so that is what we did we just saw the count of the size so now next what we can do is we can get the first um, line in the file so basically you can directly do that in scala using the text file dot first so that is what we are going to do now dot first so this should return the first line so if you see here apache spark was the first line right so if you notice this file yeah apache spark with a hash was the first line and that is what we got here that is what we got it as a string okay that is the result so what we have done here is we have used spark to read the file transform and then finally create an action and then we got the output so now let's do some complicated task right now let's do some transformation so if you notice here we have the text file okay we are going to use filter and then identify what are all the file lines which has spark in them okay so what are all the lines which has spark in them so that is what we are going to do here so let me type this so i'm going to say text file lines i can create any object i'm just saying text file line i'm using the text file and i'm saying filter okay filter every line where line dot contains spark so wherever there is spark this is going to be filtered okay so if you see there is an rdd created for this as well so there is an rdd created for text file and it is immutable same way now this is, this is there is an rtd over this okay now we can just say text file lines okay this will re just return the rtd because we didn't do any action on it correct so we did create only the rdd but we didn't do any action on it so we need to perform an action and then only we will get the result so if you notice here this count and the first these are all actions so we can do some uh, uh, action over this okay so if you notice here count is a type of an action so if you see here count is a type of an action so we can do that so this should return the number of lines which are there with spark if you see the result is 20 so the number of lines which are there inside the text file lines is 20 okay so this is an action so now you know what is rdd right so rdd is a mutable immutable object which gets created from the data which we um, extracted basically so the, the that's why rdd is like a data set so it's like a resilient distributed data set you can create multiple uh, rdds from a same rdd that is what we did here from a text file rdd we created text file lines rdd and over that we just did some action to get some results so for example we did a count and we got some results so that is an action and using this data you can either do dashboard or uh, what do you call it, reporting or you can do uh, store it again back into some other data source okay so that is what this is this covers the whole life cycle right so first what we did is we loaded the file 
okay this is what we did and then we used uh, rtd using the rtd we created some uh, transformed some data here and then finally we created an action and then we saw the data which got um, filtered okay so that is the whole life cycle uh, if you see uh, their website they give uh, other examples there are some complex operations like using map and stuff like that but uh, you guys understood the concept right so this is how um, uh, spark works and this is nothing but the interactive console of spark and um, you can even load java programs in it but this is just the interactive shell which i am showing right now so uh, right now i will not cover the java loading part that i will cover in the next video but um, this is this is what spark is all about and this is why spark is um, uh, great right so you, you saw that how much time it took for me to write a spark program it was very simple right isn't it i just started the spark console and then i just started writing uh, already the spark related coding okay um, that's it for this particular video hope you guys understood what is apache spark and the internals of what uh, it is doing and how it is doing uh, meet you again in the next video uh, until then thank you